You're live. We are. Goodness. Hi, everybody. Good evening. Welcome to the craft table. We thought we would try something a little different this evening. So we know we didn't give you a lot of notice, but this is an experiment. So uh, we'd love your feedback. We're going to try and do an actual live tutorial, a live crochet along. Um, I'm going to talk about the yarn. We're going to actually show the thing I'm making. Um, and if any of you want to make it along with me as I do this, then great. Otherwise, you can just sit back, work on your current project and enjoy a little bit of company on a Tuesday evening. Um, I've been making these. Mr. and Stitches wanted a whole bunch of new pot scrubbers and dishcloths. So I figured I'd grab one of these balls of the new um, cotton scrubby yarn that uh, he got me for Valentine's Day and I started making some and I wanted to make some some thicker pot scrubbers. So I came up this little pattern and I really like it. It's really cute. It's really quick and simple. Um, and I like how it ended up looking with the short sort of uh, bits of self striping that end up in this particular ball of yarn. So I thought I would show you guys how to do that this evening. Um, so a couple things, I'm gonna be using a 5.5 millimeter hook. This is also known as an I or a nine in the US. Um, I think it's a size five in the UK. But if you find you have trouble navigating your stitches, if you're using sort of a slightly strange novelty yarn. This has got um, areas of that sort of the scrubby kind of cotton. So if you find that it's a bit difficult to see your stitches, you might want to use a larger hook. So a size six or a, like a six millimeter or a J hook or even a six and a half millimeter. Um, you can go up as much as you want. It's not going to affect the pattern and um, you can always just tighten up on your stitches if you feel like it's getting a little loose on you. So that's what I'm going to use. Um, this is a really easy going pattern. You don't have to worry about it being perfect. I mean, when do you ever, <laughs> especially though, because we're going to use this as a pot scrubber. Um, so yeah, just enjoy the, the build along with me and uh, you can make up a whole pile of these really quickly. And they're kind of cute with the self striping uh, scrubby yarn. They end up looking kind of neat. So I like that. Like that's one whole side is all the scrubby. And then this side wound up being mostly um, sort of the plain cotton. Now, if you don't have any scrubby yarn, feel free to just use plain old cotton yarn like you would if you were just making a dishcloth uh, because it'll work the same with this pattern. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to put my scissors and my yarn needle to the side here. And I'll just stick these off sort of to the edge of the, get them out of the way. And I'm going to find my ins here. So. Aphrodite is waving madly. Oh, hey, Aphrodite. Lots of hellos from all over the place. Hi, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I'm, this is going to be half the show now is me trying to get the middle of this ball out. Oh, my gosh. <laughs> See, that's the thing with some yarns. They're not if they're not smooth, the insides don't want to come out. So you know what? I'm going to cheat. I'm just going to use the um, I'm going to go get my um, my yarn bowl, though. Hang on one second, everybody. Also, um, feedback is that our sound and our visual is good today. Oh, great. So that's a good sign. Okay, super. Thank great. you, Internet Squirrels. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'm just going to keep that out of the light so everybody can see what we're doing. So I'm going to try and move at a nice steady pace. Um, I'm going to explain what I'm doing as I go, just like I would if I was doing a typical tutorial with you guys. Uh, but I'm going to be making this in real time. So there won't be any you know, cutaways until you, so you see the end of a row. Um, I'm going to start with a cinch circle. Now, if you find cinch circles are a little problematic, you can do the chain four and make a ring method. That will work just fine. Remember, this isn't a super fancy, um, this isn't a super fancy pattern. So you don't have to worry about stitch count too much. You don't have to worry about uh, doing anything very fancy. So I've made a cinch circle and I've chained three because we're going to be using double crochet. Um, into that cinch circle, we're going to double crochet 11 times because we are going to treat this chain three as a double crochet. So three, or I should say 11 more double crochet into that cinch circle. And if anybody's got questions about working with this yarn or working with cotton in general, feel free to uh, leave it in the chat. And if Mr. and Stitches can catch it, he'll, uh, he'll relay it to me and I can hopefully answer some questions while we're crocheting. 
All right. Something I like to do, which you may not see me do very often, is if I'm busy working into a cinch circle and my little short tail's getting shorter, I'll just pull on it a little bit to give myself a little more room to work. And it also tightens up my little cinch circle so that while I'm adding double crochets into it, it's nice and manageable. And including my chain three, I'm up to seven. Miranda asks, is it easy to work with or is it a little more difficult, this yarn? Um, if I were to compare it to the Red Heart Scrubby, I would say this is easier to work with because it's not quite, it's, it alternates between the nice smooth cotton and having the strange sort of um, scrubby cotton. But um, yeah, so I'd say it's easier than that. But if I compare it to just regular plain old cotton, it is a little more try, it's a little more um, I'm not going to say difficult, but it's a little, you have to work a little harder to see your stitches when you get to the fluffy part. So, um, a lot of family members are surprised and excited that we <laughs> did this impromptu um, live, live stream. And, um, everyone's discovered the new Jada emoji. <laughs> Awesome. Well, like we said, tonight's a bit of an experiment. We want to see how this turns out. We want to know how it looks. And we want to know if um, if this is sort of something you guys would like to see more of moving forward. So just simple little crochet tutorials just to spend a little time with us on a, you know, the odd sort of random evening when we've got uh, a fun little project to do and we want to spend a little time hanging out with everybody. Okay, I've worked 11 double crochet into my cinch circle. I'm going to count my chain three as a double crochet. I'm going to pull on that little short tail to cinch everything up. And now I'm gonna join with a slip stitch to the top of my chain three. So I have 12 stitches at the end of row one here, and I'm gonna work over top of my little short tail. Chad asks, does cotton shrink? Cotton technically doesn't shrink. It will, it'll, it'll gnarl up. It might get a little tighter if you, if you wash it in really hot water or if you dry it in really hot temperatures by accident. So I don't recommend you do that. But typically cotton doesn't shrink. Um, wool will certainly shrink, but cotton usually maintains its, its shape. It has pretty good shape memory. Uh, so there's 12. We're going to chain three to begin row two. We're going to double crochet into the same stitch as the chain three. So if I pull up on that chain three, hopefully you can see that little hole that happens underneath it. I'm going to double crochet into the same place. And now we're going to double crochet into each stitch all the way around twice. So two double crochet into each stitch. I'm going to pull some yarn out of my bowl here. Um, I don't remember who asked, but someone uh, said, it, it, what difficulty level would you call this uh, project? Hmm. Well, um, I would call this... Um, I would call this a beginner project. Somebody who's not not an absolute raw beginner, but someone who knows how to use the double crochet stitch. Someone who's comfortable working in the round, and somebody who's comfortable uh, working uh, decrease stitches, like double crochet two together, because we will be using that on the other side of this little scrubby. So I'd say, um, I don't know, is such a thing as intermediate beginner? <laughs> Can you be a halfway through your beginner? Um, so it's it's beginner friendly, but like I said, you want to have a couple of projects under your belt first. <laughs> Hello, everyone. Hi. So like we said, we're trying something different here. Um, <laughs> it's fun. It, I've, I've had so much fun making these little scrubbers and making some dishcloths for the kitchen that I was excited to sort of share this little scrubber project with you guys. And we thought maybe it might be kind of fun to try it out live. We've never done this before. So I'm really loving this. I love this variegated part of the cotton. Um, this again is the Burnett Scrub Off. It's um, one of the balls of yarn that Mr. and Stitches got me for Valentine's um, Someone Day. asked if, uh, Bobby asked if we can zoom in a bit. Um, can I try? I, might, I don't you, know. May, might, maybe you can come a little closer. Just uh, pause it for a minute. But I don't want it to be fuzzy. Yeah. I think that's the best we can do yeah, at the, the moment. I think that's the best we can do, Bobby. Uh, just working two double crochet into each stitch all the way around. So we began row two with a chain three. We're not going to count that chain three as a double crochet. We're going to skip it. We're going to use that little working in the round trick that I, I like to use when we do this sort of project. Um, every stitch has two double crochet in it. So at this point, if you were to include your chain three 
as a stitch, you should count 24 all the way around. But we're gonna do a little closing trick. This stitch here that sits right at the bottom of the chain three, the chain three looks like it's coming out of it. This is sometimes called the false stitch. We're gonna work a double crochet into that stitch. And then we're gonna hop over top of the chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. So now that pushes the chain three to the back. We're not gonna count the chain three as a stitch. You should have 24 actual double crochets at the end of round two. And we've got one more row of increasing to do before we get to the end of side one of our little pot scrubber. We're gonna chain three to begin. Same thing, we're not gonna count that as a chain, and we're not gonna count the chain three as a double crochet, but we are gonna double crochet into the same place that that chain three came out of. Pull up on my yarn here. One more double crochet into the next stitch, and here's the little repeater pattern for all the way around row three. Two double crochet into the next stitch, and double crochet once into the stitch after that. So the little pattern is two, one, two, one, all the way around. And at the end of this row, we'll be up to 36 stitches. We're gonna do the same little thing when we get to the end. We're gonna do that little double crochet into the false stitch so that we can cheat over top of the chain three and have a nice closed in circle when we're done. How's the chat, Mr. and Stitches? Oh, there's lots of conversations. Um, people asking where we got the yarn. I think it was Walmart. Yes, yeah, um, you, you picked this up at Walmart. People asking, what else can you make with this yarn? Um, other suggestions, other ideas? Um, I would say um, you could wash your body with this too. So if you wanted to make like a little scrubby dishcloth or a a scrubber face cloth out of this stuff. It's cotton, so it's not gonna hurt or scratch you. Um, but this bit here does, it's it's scratchy. It's not painfully scratchy, but, uh, cause it's cotton, but it's definitely It's like gonna, a rough cotton. Yeah, it's definitely it, it's, gonna exfoliate your skin. Yeah. So you could totally use it for, in the bathroom. It's a rough cotton, but it's, it's relatively soft, especially compared to that uh, polyester stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, or acrylic. It was polyester. polyester. Yeah, I like this. I like the colorways that it comes in. And I also like that it alternates between smooth, regular cotton and this funny little scrubby stuff. It's kind of neat. <laughs> Aphrodite says, Jada, my belief is the scrubby yarn is a mythical beast that <laughs> must be put to rest. <laughs> Are you really suggesting that I actually touch it? You know what? Despairing. Aphrodite, Aphrodite does not like this, this yarn. This one isn't as bad it's as the not, other it's, one. It's nothing like the other stuff. No, it the really other doesn't stuff feel that way. kind of feels like, yeah, it's hard. Well, yeah, it's not, it's not, I mean, like, I don't mind the feel of the other stuff. But... This one feels like, you know, when you shred a pair of jeans, yeah. You know, when you get it a little bit shredded, like, bit like your knee or frayed or something. Frayed, that it kind of feels like that. Yeah. So I'm just working my way around row three here. Now I'm into this scrubby stuff. So, uh, yeah, these would make a great uh, body or face scrubby. Absolutely. Just don't scrub too hard. Yeah. <laughs> But I mean, you wouldn't do that anyway with a, with an exfoliating. Um, you don't want to lose your pad. eyebrows. You don't want to. You just you don't want to scratch yourself. Or your nose. Um, everybody has different um, skin types. You know, some people's skin is a lot more fragile or thin than others. Um, but you know your own body. You know your own skin. You could totally just pick this up and feel it. Like you'll you'll know by just rubbing it across the back of your hand or on the other side of your wrist whether or not you'd want to scrub that all over yourself in the shower. But I would. I like the feel of it. Um, I think it feels Ab nice. Abby asks, does this yarn knot up when crocheting? Um, I haven't found while I'm, 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 un I'm unwinding this ball from the outside, which is not something I typically do. But because of the nature of this um, kind of the, the, the scratchy picky part, it won't come out of the center of the ball neatly without, you know, a great big yarn demon <laughs> coming out of the center of this ball. <laughs> so I'm going to unwind it from the outside, which isn't something I typically do. But <laughs> because it's such a small little project, you're not really pulling a whole lot of yarn at once. Yeah. So you don't really give it a chance to get Afro tangled. Aphrodite's saying she might give it a go. 
She might give it a try. Honestly, I, um, I like it. I think it's just, kind of fun. Just get one, just get one ball. Yeah, one ball. Know? Oh, that reminds me, guys. Um, so I found out somebody mentioned that. So this is the Burnout Handicrafter. Um, but somebody mentioned that the Burnout releases pretty much the exact same kind of cotton yarns, but under the peaches and cream title. And that is more prevalent down in the United States, from what we understand. We don't see a whole lot of peaches and cream up here, but apparently it's all the same company and they just have two different sort of labels that they put on it. Uh, all right, I'm at the end of row three. If I were to include my chain three, that would be 36 stitches, but we don't wanna do that. We wanna put one more double crochet into that false stitch at the bottom of the chain three. And then we're gonna skip over top of the chain three to the top of the first real double crochet and join with a slip stitch. There we go. And that, so this cute little thing is one whole side. So that's one whole side of the scrubby. And now we're going to start to decrease to work side two. I, I just, I'd say this is about the size of the palm of your hand. So if you're wondering how big it is, that's how big it is. And I like that because I can grab it between my, my fingers and my thumb and you know, really, you can scrub a pot with the scrubby part, or you can flip it back to like just your plates if you're just washing like you know something that doesn't need to be fully scrubbed off. So, really like that. I like the way it's it's turning out. Okay, that was row three. You've got 36 stitches. They're all double crochets. We're going to start row four and decreasing. So, chain three to begin into the same stitch that the chain three came out of, so that same stitch is joining, we're going to work half of a double crochet. So we're gonna begin a double crochet, work the first half of it, and then we're going to start another double crochet in the stitch right next door because we're working a double crochet two together. This is the beginning of our decrease. So it might be a bit hard to see. Work the first half of, the, of one double crochet, work the first half of the next double crochet, you'll be left with three loops on your hook, wrap and pull back through everything. So you've double crocheted two stitches together. Remember our chain three doesn't count. That's how we begin the row. Double crochet once into the stitch next to that. And then we repeat. We're going to double crochet two together. So you work the first half of a double crochet Start another double crochet in the stitch next door. Work the first half of that one. That leaves you with three loops on your hook. Yarn over and pull back through everything. That is double crochet, two together. Double crochet once in the stitch next to that. And repeat. And this is going to bring us from 36 stitches back down to 24. Um, Antoinette asks, will you have this in your pattern store? This little scrubby. Oh, I hadn't thought of that, but we can certainly write it up. Yeah, for sure. If you're interested, we can do that. Yeah, thanks, Antoinette. I really like this. Like I said, this will work out if you're just using plain old cotton too, like the same kind of cotton you would make a regular dishcloth out of. You don't have to use the scrubby. Um, and you could, if you also have more of that Red Heart scrub it or scrubby lying around, uh, the polyester stuff that we were using a few weeks ago. Actually, I have some of that right here. It's this stuff. We we started making some hearts out of it. So um, if I were honestly, I like the feeling of both. They feel different. But, um, <laughs> the cotton the cotton would be nice for if you're also going to make one for like use in the bathroom. So for use on your own skin, I would just keep I would keep the polyester stuff in the kitchen exclusively. Um, but you could also use this if you had some leftover to make one of these as well. So it's, it's, um, you can use plain cotton, you can use the scrubby, you can use the stuff that goes back and forth. Celeste asks, would scrubby yarn work well for a loofah? Um, I would say yes. I would say this stuff, yes. yes the other stuff, nice. no. Yeah, I would say this, the cotton scrubby yarns, and there's obviously a few different kinds of cotton, cotton scrubby yarns <laughs> on the market. Um, There's softer ones than this. Yes, too. there are softer ones than this. I think if you're going to if you're going to make something that you want to rub on your skin, it is really recommended that you pick that ball <laughs> of yarn up and you rub it on your face and you see like if you like the feel of it or not. Um, like I said, I like the feel of this cotton scrubby. It's not sharp, so it's not going to scratch you and it's not going to scratch your pots but it will exfoliate. It's just scratchy enough that it'll exfoliate. 
Um, so I'm definitely going to have some of these in the, in the shower because I like the way it feels. And I'm just working on my first decrease row here. <laughs> Welcome everyone who's caught us for the first time. Oh my gosh, there's, hi. There's, there's a few people. Yeah, and just to reiterate, we don't normally do this. This is the first time we've ever tried a live tutorial. So if anybody, you know, like we'd love the feedback. How does the video feed look? How is the sound sound? <laughs> how um how does how, how does, does the sound sound? How does the sound sound? Is this something you guys might like to try a little more often? Um, because this is kind of fun. Anytime we have like a little tiny fun little project like this, it might be nice to just be able to sort of sit here with you guys in real time and uh, make up a couple and just chat while we're doing it. It's kind of fun. And if we feed the internet squirrels, they, uh, they'll they be nice to they'll us. They'll be nice to us and they won't give us bad internet. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's not as difficult to see your stitches using this this particular stuff. So I found, I think the scrubby bits are longer on the Red Heart scrubby than they are on the Burnat scrub off. So I found trying to find my stitches with this stuff was much more difficult. I find it's a lot easier using this particular yarn. So, so that's a definite bonus. Plus, you know, cotton, I love cotton. Just about finished row four here. That's my last double crochet two together. <laughs> Some people say they miss they miss seeing the backdrop of the craft room because of all the pretty colors in the yarn. <laughs> well, our next live stream will be a regular one, everybody. Yeah. We'll have a party next time. Um, okay, I'm at the end of the row. I'm just going to uh, work another double crochet into that false stitch, just like I would in a regular uh, increasing row. But I'm going to hop over top of my chain three Join to the top of the first what is a double crochet two together stitch and join with a slip stitch. So if you're making this along with me, now you've got something that looks like a little bowl. Isn't that cute? Because we worked, started with 12, we increased to 24, we increased to 36, and now we've decreased back to 24 at the end of row four. Row five, we're gonna chain three to begin. We're not gonna count that chain three as a stitch but we are gonna work another double crochet into the bottom of it. So we're gonna start a double crochet. We're gonna work the first half of it, and then we're going to work the first half of a double crochet into the stitch next to that. Turn over and pull back through everything. So we're double crocheting two together, and we're gonna do that all the way around for row five. So you're just gonna double crochet two stitches together all the way around. And at the end of this row, you'll be back down to 12 stitches. Aw, Aphrodite said this actually made my day. Aw. <laughs> Big heart. <laughs> oh, I'm so glad to hear that. That's so nice. We like hanging out with everybody. It's fun. It's nice to have company uh, while you're crocheting, too. Yeah. Or if you live in the middle of nowhere like us, it's nice to have just, you know, know that there's other people out there. <laughs> There are other human beings out there beyond the, the phone and the tablet. Beyond the phone and the tablet, yeah. <laughs> So the video sounds great. The image is good. Great. Um, that is great to hear. Yeah, we're See? so glad to hear that. Oh we my just gosh. get buy a bag of peanuts for the internet squirrels <laughs> and feed them before we get started, oh, and we're good. Little digital peanuts. Little digital peanuts. That is so darn cute. <laughs> That's going to be the next new emoji. That, that'll be the next. Everyone's emoji. loving the new Jada oh, emoji. Oh, goody. <laughs> There's been, uh, there's a few new emojis today and there's a few updates. Uh, Mama and Stitches claimed that I made her eyes too close together <laughs> and that she looked cross-eyed in her emoji. So I had to fix that. We have to please Mama. <laughs> uh, so there's an updated Mama emoji. There's a new welcome emoji for new members. And there's uh, Jada and there's an updated um, Gwen Chibi. And uh, I think the last one, then there was the frog a, a few weeks ago and the yarn shopping. All right. Oh, someone found a peanut. Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Oh my gosh. All that right. is awesome. I'm... <laughs> Digital peanut. I didn't know that existed. This is great. This is so cute. Okay. I've worked a double crochet, two stitches together all the way around. 
That brings me to the end of row five. It's hard to see, but there's still that false stitch to contend with. So I'm gonna work one double crochet into the bottom of it. And then I'm going to hop over top of my chain three and join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. So the stitches don't really matter here. We're not really worrying about counts, but you should be down to roughly 12. If it's 13, who cares? <laughs> this is just a scrubby. And now we're going to fill in this little hole. So this is row six. And all we're gonna do is, actually we're gonna do something kind of fun. We're gonna work half double crochets, but we're gonna do a half double crochet, three stitches together. So because we've, we've got 12 stitches to close up, we're going to work a total of four half double crochet, three stitches together. And I'll show you what that looks like. So I'm only gonna chain one to begin this row. I'm gonna start a half double crochet in the same place that I just joined my yarn. And I'm not doing anything, I just wrapped, I, so I yarned over, I picked up a loop, that's it. I'm gonna yarn over, pick up a loop in the next stitch, yarn over and pick up a loop in the next stitch. So that's all I'm doing is just yarn over and picking up loops. You should have seven loops on your hook. So this is a half double crochet, three together, Yarn over once more, pull back through everything. <laughs> and that's half double crochet, three together. <laughs> now we do it again. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn here. Yarn over, pull up a loop. Yarn over and pull up a loop. And I'm back to the regular cotton. Yarn over, pull back through everything. And we're gonna do two more. Yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, and pull up a loop. And I have to say that this is getting to be pretty small space that you're working in. So if you have to slow down, slow down. <laughs> I'm just giggling at comments here. Aphrodite's making me laugh. <laughs> um, someone asked, would this be good for a soap saber scrubby? Hmm. I would say yes. I would say yes. Yeah, once again, you can use the soap saver scrubbies in the shower. Um, you could even use them at the sink. Um, if you're using uh, bars of soap for your dishes, there are dish soap bars out there, then you might be probably using it at the, the kitchen sink. So absolutely, you could turn this into a soap saver scrubby. Um, and that would probably look pretty cool because you'd end up with like stripes of all this different sort of different colored and different textured yarn coming out. I like that idea. We've got one more. Three double, three half double crochet together stitches to do. So I'm gonna start that. We have a super chat from Can Candy. Oh my gosh, thank you, Candy. Oh my god, thank you. Um, Candy says hi. My first time catching a live video. Hey, that's awesome. That's great. I'm glad you could drop by, Candy. Thanks so much. All right, that is three or four, I should say, half double crochet together stitches. And once you've finished that last one, you're just going to find a stitch, should be the first stitch you made. It might be a bit <laughs> difficult to see, but like I said, it doesn't matter. You just wanna join that row with a slip stitch and then fasten off. And then you can pull it out, squish it down. Ba -ba! I love it, I love this little scrubby. I'm gonna weave in my little tail now. So I'm gonna grab my yarn needle and I'm just going to find some stitches to weave this under. While Jada's weaving, I just wanna let everyone know because a few people did ask, yes, this video will become a regular video yes. when, uh, once it's done. So it might take about, I don't know, 20 minutes, uh, half an hour, maybe even a full hour. And then you can go back and watch the whole thing and yes. in your, you know, uh, pausing, rewinding. Yeah, it's going to become a regular video. So if you felt this moved a little quickly or if you just popped in kind of halfway through, then you'll be able to go back and watch it um, again. Like we said, we wanted to try a bit of an experiment. I got so excited making these things that I just wanted to share it with you guys. And I thought it might be kind of fun to just hang out on a Tuesday night with everybody. So I'm just going back and forth over top of some of the stitches that I've woven my little tail through. And rather than trimming it, I'm just going to keep weaving it in until it's all gone. Um, K 
Kiara, I hope I'm pronouncing this right. Ciara, Kiara, C I A R A, mm -hmm. asks uh, Jada, I'm making your C to C baby blanket, mm -hmm. same hook and yarn. Do you recall how long it took to make? Um, well, I, I, lots of people ask me how long it takes to make things, and I'm never really good at answering this because I crochet pretty fast. Um, so if I'm just going to sit down and I'm, I'm familiar with the pattern, um, so I know I already know how the pattern goes then um, I can crochet pretty darn quickly. I can make an entire corner to corner baby blanket in an evening, but some people it'll probably take a week. Uh, it also depends on how much time you have to spare. So like if I sit down and just get at it, I might work at it for five hours um, and pretty much have the thing done because I'm really zipping along. But if my arthritis is acting up, then I'm gonna be moving slower and it'll take me longer. Um, Baby blankets are typically not a long project and especially ones that have a lovely repeating stitch. So baby blankets, um, especially the corner to corner. Oh God, I love that pattern. Um, it's a nice repetitive stitch that doesn't require a lot of thinking. So um, it's going to move along quicker than a baby blanket with a more complicated stitch. Certainly it shouldn't take you, um, it should only, if you work at it, say, let's say an hour every night, then you might be able to get it done in a week. Um, and that's not zipping along at a fast pace. You should be able to sort of just kick back, relax, and have a baby blanket done in a week. Because um, I think if I'm taking my time, that's how long it takes me to make one of those. We have a super chat from Ava. Oh my gosh, thank you, Ava. Ava says, hi, I love your channel. Hi, Ava, thank you so much. <laughs> there we go, that's so cute. So there we have it. I've got three, you know what? I'm gonna start another one here. And I noticed that these ones are a bit bigger than this one. I wonder if that's because my tension was a bit tighter. Guys, I'm <laughs> gonna try one with a bigger hook. So I'm just gonna, so this this one was a 5.5 millimeter. I'm gonna try one with a slightly bigger hook. So let me grab my hook package here. Um, All right. I wanted to an answer, um, I, I lost the feet out. Ashley, Ashley had a question. Sure. Can these be thrown in the dishwasher? <laughs> <laughs> along with the dishes. Along the dishes, I would say no. Yeah, because it's because they're gonna flop they're gonna around, get and around. then they're gonna they're gonna <laughs> blow around, and then they'll get stuck in the in the gears, the mechanism there. So put them in the in the washing machine. So whenever yeah. you wash like your towels or your dishcloths, just toss Shh. them in the washing machine. But it's cotton, um, so this can definitely go in the washing. Yeah, machine. and if your washing machine, because I think as she mentioned her washing machine, like small things jam. Oh, so just wash them by hand. Yeah, yeah, you can do that too. I yeah. know. Unless, unless, if you've got one of those machines where you can, uh, those dishwashers that you can uh, snap the, like put a few things in and snap the lid. Oh, so yeah. that not, like it doesn't blow around, oh, then yeah. then you oh, yeah. then like the you cage. can uh, like the cage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Then you could absolutely put them yeah, in there. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, there's some yeah some things. Like as long little... as they are caged in and not flopping around. Yeah, then they you could totally do that. Okay, so um, I'm gonna make another one here, guys. I'm gonna move along a little quicker, but I'm gonna try one with a J hook. <laughs> so this is a six millimeter. I'm that gonna, was a five and a half. I'm gonna see if I can make it just a little bit bigger. I'm gonna pause you for a second sure. here. Diane has a, a, a very serious all caps question. Oh my. <laughs> and Diane asks, can I ask a question? I want to make a baby blanket with a very soft baby yarn. What should I use? Oh, gosh. Um, well, I don't know what you have available where you are. Um, baby yarns all really run the gamut. Um, if you can find a nice soft cotton baby yarn, then that's always a great choice for a baby blanket. Plus it's easily washable. Um, there are plenty of nice soft acrylic baby yarns. Um, my best advice is if you've got a yarn store nearby, to go out and try the yarns. It doesn't necessarily have to say baby on the label. Um, some yarns like the Burnat Premium, which is an acrylic yarn. You hear me talk about it a lot because I really like it. It is super soft. Um, it's acrylic. It's not necessarily for babies, but acrylic yarn is acrylic yarn and cotton yarn is cotton yarn regardless of what they're trying to market it as. So if you find a nice cotton or acrylic yarn that just feels so soft that you love the feel of it. Pick some colors that you like and you can use that to make a baby blanket. I've made baby blankets using non-baby yarn all the time just because I like the feel of it or because I know it's a good fiber. Um, so yeah. 
And there's a lot of suggestions in the in the chat box too. Oh, great! People, yes, yeah. If anybody's making, used some yarn that you like that you feel is really soft, feel free to chime in. That's great. Please chime in. Uh, don't be shy mm -hmm. if you have answers to anyone's questions or, um, you know, advice or opinion even on. Yeah, we all have access to different yarns um, depending on where we are. So, for example, I have access to that Burnett Premium yarn. It's usually at our local Walmart. That's the only place I've found it. I really like it, um, but not everybody necessarily can get their hands on it. So, uh, oh, is that our dinner? <laughs> Mr. and Stitches has to go turn off a pot. We're busy making dinner here. <laughs> so he's away from the chat for a few minutes and I can't see it. So I apologize if, uh, if anybody sort of has anything to say and he doesn't quite see it. Um, I can't see it, so we'll have to wait till he gets back, but I'll just fill you all in on where I am so far. I'm making a second one of these little pot scrubbers. I decided I would use the six millimeter hook, which is also known as a J hook, um, because I thought that the five and a half millimeter hook that I used made it up a little on the small side. Not that there's anything wrong with that, but I thought I would try the bigger hook to see how it changes. I'm halfway through, almost done, row two. Row two will have 24 double crochets in it when I'm done. And uh, like you saw at the beginning of the tutorial, I am um, I go from 20, 12 stitches to 24 stitches to 36, and then we go back down from 36 to 24 to 12. And I don't want to have gaps in my circles, so that's why when I get to the end of the row and I'm faced with that little false stitch, I work one double crochet into that false stitch, skip the chain three. Oh, yarn stuck in my bowl. There we go. So one double crochet into the false stitch. Skip over top of that, join with a slip stitch to the top of the first real double crochet. That's row two, that's 24 stitches. Off I go for row three. Chain three, double crochet in the same stitch as joining. Double crochet once into the stitch after that. And then sets of two double crochet. <laughs> and one double crochet. Two, one, two, one, all the way around. I'm kind of sorry I couldn't get the inside of that, um, sort of the inside end of that, this yarn, because I like I like to unravel my balls of yarn from the inside out, but um, I think the grabbiness of this particular yarn just refused, <laughs> refused to let me find the inside end. But it's unraveling okay from the outside, so that's all right. Uh, this this scrubby yarn is called Burnat. Um, it's scrub not. Off. Is it scrub off? Yeah. The other one's scrubby. So this is Burnat Handicrafter Cotton Scrub Off. Um, it's it's 100% cotton, and this particular colorway I'm using is called Beach House. It's a size four medium yarn, and you can toss it in the washing machine and the dryer. So another great way, or another great reason, it's good for making dishcloths and scrubbies and stuff out of. And I all oh, of something else I wanted to add. So I buy a lot of the red of the, the Burnett Handicrafter regular cotton. And I find that the cotton, so the plain cotton that runs through this scrub off ball of yarn is softer than the regular plain cotton that comes under the Handicrafter brand. So I thought that was kind of interesting. So in between the really scrubby bits of yarn in this ball of yarn, the, the plain the plain cotton is really, really soft. So it's it's it feels nice to work with. I like it. And back to the scrubby again. Mr. and Stitches is busy typing away. I'm having a conversation with Toby McFan. Oh, hi, Toby. <laughs> <laughs> So we want to know if we were going to show ourselves at the end of the video. And I said, probably not tonight. Probably not tonight. Because uh, I don't feel in. like putting my pants and shirt on. <laughs> we're also kind of.
of locked into the craft table here, so it's uh, we're kind of jammed in yeah. like sardines. <laughs> All right. Hey, we have a new member. Hey. Welcome, Heather. Hi, Heather. Welcome to the family. Thank you for joining. Yeah. Just finishing row three. I worked my last double crochet in the fall stitch. I'm skipping over the chain three, joining with a slip stitch to the first real double crochet. That's 36 stitches. Oh, my gosh. Isn't that cute? I love it how you've got, like, all this plain and then just a little swatch of that crazy fluffy yarn. This is, uh, I really like it. Is it shaping up to be about the same size? Yeah, so I think the size six millimeter hook is makes a slightly larger, a little more accessible uh, scrubby. So the size six millimeter, I use the five and a half, it's fine too, but one half size up is great as well. Now for row four, I'm going to start to decrease. So I'm gonna work a half, a double crochet two together, beginning in the same stitch that I joined in. So double crochet two stitches together, double crochet once into the stitch after that, and then repeat. Double crochet two stitches together, double crochet into the next stitch, and so on. I'm really glad everybody was able to sort of pop in and spend some time with us this evening. We, like we said, we didn't really, it just, we just sort of decided last minute, hey, maybe, Impromptu. maybe, maybe we'll just share this little, this little, um, scrub it, scrubby, scrubber, pot scrubber tutorial with everybody live and we'll see how it works out because we've not really done this before and we thought maybe it might be kind of fun. So I'm just working on scrubber number two here. <laughs> yes, Aphrodite, you have to keep liking, sharing, liking and sharing and liking and sharing. <laughs> <laughs> and we love it when you do. <laughs> it definitely hel helps us out. Yes, yes. If everybody takes a moment to, to like a video or to share it with somebody that you know wants to learn how to crochet. We really appreciate it. Uh, we want to sort of share the love of crochet as much as we can. And if you're unsure what the like button is, because a few people have asked, it's basically, it's the same as Facebook. It's a little button that looks like a little thumbs up. Yes, and the like buttons, uh, the like and the dislike button are close to each other. And if you're like me and you're all thumbs, then you smack both of them regularly. <laughs> So don't feel bad if you accidentally hit the wrong one. I do it all the time. Zipping along here. I noticed too that in the white section of this scrubby bit of yarn, it kind of alternates between white and sort of a gray color. I don't know if you can see that as clearly on screen, but I just love the color variance in this ball of yarn. It's so pretty. Uh, Romans um, says that they're really uh, enjoying this video to oh. please do more. Oh, okay, great. Thanks yeah. so much for the feedback. If anyone has any suggestions on, um, you know, cute, quick project so, something ideas, small something quick. small and yeah, quick. Yeah, we just sort of sit for an hour and chat while we make one. That would be great. Um, yeah, let us know. Leave your feedback in the comments after the video or in the chat now. I'm going to finish this with a with a flourish with a double crochet two together. No, like I said, so this is one of those patterns where, you know, the, the use the use the stitch count as a guide. You don't have to be absolutely bang on because it's going to be a pot scrubber. <laughs> so if you're if you're like, oh, no, I'm a stitch off or I have too many stitches. Who cares? Just make it look like a little basket. Keep decreasing when you need to decrease. And eventually you'll get something that looks like this. And I promise it'll be just as usable as one that has all the perfect counts. So don't worry about the counts. They're not important. Once again, another reason why you don't have to worry too much about not being able to see your stitches if you get to the scrubby part, because it doesn't matter. Who cares if it's a bit, if it's a few stitches off here and there? It's a scrubber. You can use it on the pots. You can use it in the shower. The pots won't care. The pots will not mind. They just are happy to get clean. They're like, oh, that feels good. Scratch <laughs> my under, behind my ear, <laughs> get my back. Ah. <laughs> Even pots like to be scrubbed. Even pots like to be scrubbed, yes. Because then they all shiny and happy at the end. So now I'm working two double crochet stitches or two double crochet together stitches all the way around because I'm decreasing now to 12 from 24. Oh, that's a great idea. Monica um, mentioned small change purses. Oh, okay. Maybe in a new stitch. A little, oh, a new stitch. Yeah, a small purse. change 
That's a great Wouldn't idea. That be cute. Oh, I love little Saxon purses. They're so cute. When are we having Mama and Stitches on the show? We're working on it, guys. We're working on it. We're she, working on her. She might be watching right now. Oh my gosh, I have to share this because it was so adorable. I dropped in uh, yesterday. And every ball of yarn she owned in the world was all laid out in the front hall. And I was like, are you moving? What's going on? And she's like, I, I want to see it all. I needed to see it all. I needed to see what I had. <laughs> so, you know, being the typical, you know, daughter-in-law, I just started shopping her stash. I was like, oh, this is pretty. Where'd you get this? Can I have one of those? <laughs> Mom, if you're watching, hot, hot. What do you think of your uh, your eyes today? Yeah, on yeah. Your let emoji? us know later. <laughs> let us know. I hope you don't think they're cross-eyed like uh, like Sunday. <laughs> yeah, you made my eyes cross-eyed. Yeah, I'm cross-eyed. Can you fix that? <laughs> hey, we have a new member, Woo! and it's an adorable little kitten. Oh my gosh! Named Prism. Oh my gosh! Hi, Prism. Welcome to the family. Oh my goodness! What a cute picture. Is that really your cat? Because oh my gosh, we're can cat can crazy. you mail that to us? Yeah. To us? <laughs> Wow, what a cute kitten. All right, I just finished my fifth row. I'm back down to 12 stitches, and or more or less. I'm going to call it 12 because it's a scrubber, so who cares? Um, I've changed back to that plain old cotton again. I'm going to work a row now of four half double crochet, three stitches together. So your half double crochet, three stitches into one. I'm going to do that four times all the way around, and I'll be finished my second little pot scrubber. Really loving this. Oh, this particular part of the yarn is so soft. It's so much softer than their regular cotton. I think that's so funny. I wonder if it's the dye they used. And one more. Oh, and can I just say, I've made... Holy smokes, hon. How many have I? I made two dishcloths. Well, you made three for me the other day. So I've made... I've on made, request. I've made two dishcloths. I've made... Um, I tried the scrubby pattern that came on the label. So I tried making one of these. And I have to say, this is only one side. I didn't really like it very much. I mean, it's cute. But um, it wasn't, I would say, the best pattern to use with the scrubby. Because you have to kind of see where your stitches are. So it's cute. But I didn't like it as much. Um, I like these better because they're double-sided. Um, so I made one of those. I made two full-size dish claws, and now I've made four of these, and I have like an entire ball of yarn left. This is the never-ending ball of yarn. I love it. <laughs> Toby wants to know if we're still planning on putting the GoPro on Mama and Stitches, <laughs> and I said, absolutely. <laughs> I think she's game for it, too. <laughs> Gonna thread up this little tail and I'm gonna weave that one in as well. Oh, I really like this this burgundy color. Yeah, the color, the colorway of this particular ball of yarn, so the beach house scrub off <laughs> is absolutely glorious. And I think if you wanted to make some dish claws or some little scrubby pads that were themed for the 4th of July. Um, this would be a great ball of yarn to use because you've got you've got your red, white, and blue in here, and they're really pretty shades of, of all of it. Um, I just oh, I really like these colors. And I'm not being super careful about where I weave my stitches or my tail in. I just want to make sure that it's not going to come undone. So I'm just kind of going back and forth over top of my stitches. I made it. Yay. Shoopaloop made it. Hey, Shoopaloop. <laughs> like we said, it was sort of a last minute thing. We thought we'd give it a try. Uh. There we go. All right. I have finished. That's my second one. Bye -bye. All right. So let's compare them. So this one, let me get that out of the way. So I'd made these two before. These are the two that I'd made before. I made this one to start this evening and I made this with a five and a half millimeter hook. Um, so this one right here. And I made this one just now using a 6.0 millimeter hook. So a J hook. And definitely there's a size difference. Let me get the hooks out of the way. 
So this little guy is smaller than this guy by, hmm, where's my measuring tape? Let's actually measure these. So the diameter of this one is almost three and a half inches or uh, almost nine centimeters. And the bigger one is about three and three quarter inches or almost 10 centimeters. So that's quite a big difference, I'd say, between the two. So that gives you an idea of what the exact same pattern and the exact same yarn made with two different sized hooks will do. It's a pretty decent size difference. Um, they're both still just as useful. I think, I think I like the slightly larger ones for maybe like a like a, a skin, like a, like a skin exfoliant. Like I might put a couple of these in the shower. And I think maybe the tighter ones might be better for the pots just because you're gonna be a little more, um, you're going to work a little harder and, and a little more pinpoint focus on a pot, which is a harder surface, obviously, than than your skin. So I might make make the slightly smaller ones, the pot scrubbers, just because they're a little tighter um, and like they're, they're, it's a bit slightly stiffer fabric. And I'll keep the bigger ones for the shower. So bigger ones, six millimeters, smaller ones, five and a half millimeter. And uh, not too much of a size difference, but enough that it's you can see it if, they, if you have them sitting side by side. Yeah, so I like that. I'd say final thoughts on this Burnett Scrub Off yarn. Uh, so once again, that's the yarn I was using. It's the Handicrafter Cotton Scrub Off, and size four medium. And this was the <laughs> Beach House colorway. This is the Scrubby, so the Red Heart Scrubby in polyester, and this is cotton. So if I was to compare them both, I really like the feel of both, but for different reasons. This feels very different than this one does. It's got almost, you can almost feel that it's kind of plastic, um, especially when you feel the cotton in your other hand. This has got almost a, I don't want to say oily texture, but it's got like a, a, a that durable feeling that plastic things have. It feels durable, like it would really stand up to a lot, <laughs> a lot of scrubbing. Um, the cotton one is just feels nicer. I would definitely use this on your skin in the bathtub or the shower over the burn heart or the, the red heart um, polyester scrubby. So this one's good for the pots. This one's good for the pots, the pans and your skin. Um, I think I'm definitely going to end up buying more of the cotton just because I like working with cotton and I know it's gonna stand up to more. Plus, if you made a slightly bigger version of this, for example, we have a we have a vintage style hot pad uh, holder tutorial that we did that's kind of a larger version of this one. Um, we stripe it in the tutorial, but you could just ignore the striping and just keep working this ball of yarn and you'd have a really nice double-sided hot pad. And because this is cotton, you can put something really hot on it and it's not going to burn, it's not gonna melt, um, but I wouldn't use the polyester, which is plastic essentially, I wouldn't use that for a hot pad or a trivet um, because something really hot put on that might melt it. So again, another good reason to stick with the cotton, especially in the, the kitchen. So there you go, guys. That is a little <laughs> a little Tuesday evening tutorial. We made a couple of pot scrubbers, um, got a chance to review this, this new Burnett a scrub off cotton yarn. I like that it's two different things. It's a plain cotton and it's a crazy scrubby cotton. Uh, we got an idea of what it looks like with two different hooks and we got to hang out a little bit. So I hope you guys had some fun hanging out with us this evening. Obviously this is going to become a regular video. So if you need to go back and watch the beginning of it, um, you're more than welcome to do that anytime you want and you can sort of catch how to make one of these right from the start. Um, and uh, if not, <laughs> I'm so glad you guys just sort of Parked it for a little while, put your feet up, and, and took a little time to have a little a little crochet camaraderie with Mr. and Stitches and I. And uh, for those of you that joined late, um, and you, if you're interested, this will become a video on the channel, probably in about 20 to yeah. 30 minutes. Yeah. So you can always go back and watch it again. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> I like it. I like it. Jada seal of approval, Burnett Handicrafter Cotton. It's fun to with, it feels soft, and it's got a lot of uses. <laughs> yeah, I like it too. I like it. I love the colors too. I absolutely love those colors. And then, of course, Mr. Stitches got me two other balls 
uh, for Valentine's. So I've got one and it, this is denim and this one is spring shoe. So shades of, of blue and white and shades of green and white. And I think those are both absolutely gorgeous as well. Mm -hmm. And uh, I've been just crocheting up a storm and I still have like an entire big ball of this yarn left. So each ball will give you an awful lot of project uh, making uh, from one ball alone. You can make it, you can make a lot of those little scrubbies or um, a whole bunch of different uh, dishcloths. So that's a nice big ball of yarn as well. <laughs> great, great. All right. So we are at 55 minutes. Great. Okay. I guess we'll wrap it up. We will. And go have our boring bean go supper. Go <laughs> have our beans. I let everyone know how boring our supper is. Beans and, and rice and rice and beans. Rice and beans mm -hmm. and beans and rice. And they were giving me suggestions. To oh. Spruce it up. Oh, you're going to make it tasty? <laughs> I love it. <laughs> All right, everybody, thanks so much for hanging out. Um, if you want to see the beginning of this video, give it about 20 minutes before it becomes a video, and uh, we'll talk to you guys really soon. Have a great week. We will see you Friday, and um, stay safe, stay crafty. <laughs> Have an awesome week, everybody. Good night, everyone. Good night. Thanks so much for hanging out with us.